approve the motion uh, to approve the resolution of censure against Representative Clark. Uh, the rules of the committee are such that the person who made the motion, Tom, has the right to speak first for two minutes. Then anyone who wants to speak again, anyone on the committee who wants to speak against the motion can be recognized and speak for two minutes. And if there's anyone else who wants to speak for it, they can raise their hand, speak for two minutes. If there's anyone else who wants to speak against, they can speak. If there's no second person wanting to speak against, then the person who spoke against the first time can get an additional two minutes. We'll go back and forth, but once there is no one else to speak one way or the other, then we will, before we vote, allow for public input. It will be the same. Someone who wants to speak for the resolution can be recognized to speak for it, to, to speak for approving the resolution of censure. Anyone in the public can speak for it for two minutes, and then if someone wants to speak against it, they can be recognized and speak for two minutes. We'll go back and forth. If there's no second person to speak for it. We've got up to ten minutes max, so back and forth. If there's no second person or third person to speak for it, then that's where it will end. The public input. Does everybody understand? I have a question. Just a question. Mm -hmm. uh, after the public input and stuff, mm -hmm. do we have a chance to discuss again? No. Okay. No. We, our discussion will be over. Uh, Representative Clarty will be on the discussion. <coughs> and then, before we vote, there will be the public input. Where we're going from here. Uh, Any, anybody have any problem. questions about that? And after that, we will vote. After that, we'll vote. Okay. Tom? Thank you. Uh, this resolution does not allege that Travis Party is the enemy right. It doesn't say that everything he's done in his life is bad. In fact, he's done an awful lot of good things. I just received his newsletter about a week or so ago that talked about a lot of the good things he's done. Um, when uh, the public gets around to giving their part, there may be some folks uh, on the committee or in the gallery who want to talk about the good things he's done. There may be some folks on the committee or in the gallery who want to talk about other bad things that, quote unquote, that he's done. Uh, that's irrelevant. That really is irrelevant. Um, let me do this by analogy. Let's imagine we were talking about a doctor. The doctor's a surgeon. And his surgeries have saved a thousand lives. But let's say he has botched 10 operations. Botched so badly that in three or four cases, the patient died. Now it doesn't matter how many good operations he's done, it doesn't matter how many lives that he's saved, it's medical malpractice for those 10. So what we're talking about here is legislative malpractice. Um, so I'm just gonna highlight a couple of them. I'd love to go through all these details. I mean, we're talking about trying to condense you know, 25 pages of the bill into one sentence. It's just a couple of them. Um, House Bill 714. Um, this is the one that I say has um, imposing civil penalties without due process on citizens in Houston. The legislation itself says it applies only to municipalities of a population more than 1.9 million. Why didn't they just say Houston? Uh, Houston has a, uh, an ordinance that says you can't park your car in your front yard along the side of your house. It was being challenged by people who said uh, that you can't, uh, that the municipality can't enforce traffic laws on private property. So as a favor to Houston, they, they introduced this that authorized them to do it. And here's the key thing that really bugged me. It authorized them in their... Travis has 
brought a lot of money into our county. Uh, he's done a lot with uh, the Rush State Hospital, bringing jobs and money into the, the, the county. It's, my understanding is this is just uh, a resolution alienating the party from Travis. Uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna support him. Uh, <coughs> this is all about.
itself has dwindled this down, has condensed it down to 10 core principles. So uh, that's why I've, I've chosen all these things, because these are the ones that are in opposition to the core principles. Uh, and that, in fact, is what Rule 44 asks for, opposition to the core principles. Uh, so you, you might oppose this one, that one, or the other one, but if you're opposed to five out of 10 core principles, that's silly stuff. that these 
uh, principles have been violated. Now, I will tell you, in my heart of hearts, I absolutely believe in every principle that's in the Republican Party Texas platform. Those are good, solid principles. The thing about the legislative process that you may not understand, and I won't tell you until I got there, I didn't fully understand. We don't make easy votes. The things that come to us are hard, and there's conflict, and there's competing interests and priorities. What are we going to do on this issue? So what I've given to you is an honest assessment of each of the ten votes. So the resolution would have you believe that what I did was uh, vote in a stark violation of the entire set of principles or specific ones that have been numbered in the resolution. What this sheet tells you is, no, these are the other competing the other competing principles for each of those votes. But let's talk about just a few of those votes. And I, this is in the larger letter. And I'm going to ask you to take your time to read this. I, I hope most. I hope all of you have made up your mind. I hope you take the time to consider another point of view in the, the four minutes left that I had to speak. Uh, but if you look, I want to just point out a few, few, uh, a few uh, items. One, let's take uh, let's take HB 490. Okay. Uh, this stands for proposition insurance plans should cover hearing aids, I'm going to pick on you, hearing aids, cochlear implants for kids. Now folks, if you're going to get mad at me for being for kids that have hearing defects so they can have a school, you've got me. Uh, but let's make it know what happened with this bill. It passed with 100, 120 votes in the House. It passed the Senate 27 to 4. I suspect our Senator Nichols voted for it. And the bill was signed into law by Governor Abbott. If this is such a violation of principles, how does it get the virtual unanimous vote in every chamber signed by Governor Abbott? It doesn't make sense. The NASCAR vote. I'm going to go out and live here saying these Texas. Most of my folks like NASCAR races. We didn't create a fund. We didn't create a fund, Jack. It was already there. Created by, such agenda, by Governor Perry Miller. What we did was add NASCAR along with the Republican Party of Texas to be the person that could get into these funds. Now, you may question the validity of the fund itself. All we did was say, let's add NASCAR to the NBA, to the World Series, to the Super Bowl, et cetera. That's all it did. Every one of these bills, if you will take the time to read if you'll open your hearts and you'll open your minds, you know, the Bible talks about having eyes and not seeing. It talks about having ears and not hearing. I'm asking you <coughs> to put away the predisposed notions that you've had and seriously consider, Jack, what you're doing here. You're taking a good man, you're accusing me of not doing a good job. Read what I have to say on these votes. I really don't know where you came up with the stuff that you have, but these are good things. Right, how much time I got? About two and a half. Thank you. I could go each one of these. I'll take each one of these. We went through line by line of the bills. We said, here's the principles that support it. Here's why this was a good vote. 2766, they tried to call it the granny tax. There was no tax. It was, a, it was an expense borne by the operators the fund that the state government wouldn't do to remit to trigger federal dollars to come down. So guess what? Our nursing homes in Texas can stay in business. We are on a path to losing our Texas homegrown nursing homes because they can't afford to stay in business. Again, if you're going to bust the need because I voted in favor of taking care of Texas elderly, guilty as charged. Every one of these votes I cast, you can disagree with me. We're going to have differences of opinion. Here's the hard cold proof about being a legislator. I, it is impossible. I cannot please 100% of the people 100% of the time on 100% of the issues. Impossible. You, we have differences of opinion. That's what these amount to. These are differences of opinion, not violations of principles. There are competing principles. There are good reasons for every vote I cast, and I'm telling you right now, there's not a single one of these votes. I went back, refreshed my memory, got into the records, looked at the studies, there's not a single vote on here I would change because I truly and honestly, sincerely believe it's in the best interest of this county and this district. Now, I got one minute to talk. I want to change gears. This is what I really want to talk about. This, you're going to do what you're going to do. I know what I did was the right thing to do. Here's my frustration. We're sitting around this room right now, cutting each other up, fighting with each other, getting mad at each other, getting frustrated. You know where we should have been today? outside on that square with the Republican Party booth, handing out candy to kids, telling, hey, you need to be a Republican when you grow up. Amen. I'm going to be part of the solution in this county. I'm going to be part of the solution in Texas. Both are enemies at the gate. But they're not in this room. They wear blue colors, and that's who the, that's who the battle is. So quit, quit confusing your friends with your enemies. I'm here to fight for you, fight for Cherokee County, and do good things. That is my purpose. I've done a very good job. 
it is time, but we have got to get back to a unified Republican Party. Abraham Lincoln, founder of our party, said a long time ago, a house divided cannot stand. People, this center vote is division. And I know you read your Bible. We know the Father of sin who wants to separate us. And it's the devil. And I'm afraid he's working in this room tonight. Read it. Josie, I've known you a long time. Probably won't read anybody. Yeah. You know better than this. Oh, I, I expect your help. Read it. No, you're not reading, Josie. You mind's made up. I've read it. So thank you. No, you're not, Josie. You don't. I don't think I can read that fast. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Oh, and I do want, I do want to thank the folks that came. I did two things. It had a motion for one of you. I'm not on here. Uh, I would request, there's two people I think should be exempted from the, the crowd rule or the public rule. One would be our own state senator, Robert Nichols, who should be recognized on his own. And also, Ms. Sharon Graves, who is a member of the committee in our SR, or Senate District 3, Representative 4, the Rules and Procedures Committee that actually drafted Rule 44 to prove the principles. I think that's a resource that you ought to mail yourself up again and listen to what she has to say. With that, do you have well, a question? Ma'am? I just have a question. Um, just informational because you know more about it. When it talks about what does it mean when it says subsidies to NASCAR, and no, I don't have anything against NASCAR. What, what does that mean? Um, subsidies to NASCAR. You know, uh, Chairwoman Blair, I would love to have this conversation with you. We we had text. We've had conversations. I think they've probably, they've probably been recorded. I'd like a copy of it if you got it. Uh, I know that you've had conversations that get told to other people. And so, but but the fact of the matter is, my door's always been open to you. Well, I'm and just so asking now, you now. I know what you're at, but no, I'm, I'm telling you. Now's not the time for me to go through and try to wade through this stuff on all this, because that's really not germane to the resolution. No, it's, I'm it's not asking germane to the resolution. Brought up the subsidy uh, thing. No, 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 no. They brought up this vote. Yeah, and I'm telling you. You know, I don't go, I, I, there's a lot of things I don't get involved in. I, I, I just order in the rules. Right. I'm just at, but I can ask a question, and I sure. was just curious, what does that mean? When you say it, when he says it, I don't know. What, what does that mean? And I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand your question. Very specifically, there's a fund set up for special sport events. It was voted on by, again, this is part of the powers, it's part of the principles. Is this like Formula we, we passed. We, no, 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 it's oh. not Formula 1. It, it's passed for special events. It's a special events fund. And you know what it is, Tammy. I mean, I don't, don't be disingenuous. There's, it's a fund set up. It's been there for years. I don't know exactly when it's accepted before months came on. <coughs> uh, and over time, we've added events on there that are eligible to apply for those funds. And again, national conventions, uh, debates between presidential candidates, or, or things that qualify for this fund. Now, we can debate whether is that an appropriate thing to do or not an appropriate thing to do? The vote before me was, do we add, a, add NASCAR to the NBA and the NFL and college sports and all this other stuff? That's all that did. This is, I'm sorry, but that is not exactly a driving principle. But if no, you get no. down to it. So, I'm curious, where does the fund come from? Well, and again, again, Dan, I, I, well, you know, there have been a bunch of people here that you know, asked this to be moved off on Halloween night. And I knew the people had commitments. Now, I, can't, I cannot tell you how thankful I am to all of you for coming out tonight on Halloween night with World Series on and being here for this. But I will say that we could have had these conversations before, and what I had said, you know, they're here. We have homes to get back to. I've had my six minutes. I've had my time. I, I don't see it. You know, thank you, Tom, for I see some of you is actually looking at the materials. But, you know, I would rather give these, chance, these people a chance to talk and then you can make your decision. Point of order, it's now time for the public discussion. Yeah, that's exactly what I said, Murray. Thank you. We're, Thank you we're so in agreement much. on that. <laughs> Thank you so much. <coughs> okay, we will now enter Glenn. I have a question. Yeah, just like what you asked, and I didn't hear an answer. Where are the funds for this last car? Point of order. I think we have to. That is not the order. Okay. Okay. It's time for the public discussion. Is there anyone from the public? Then I'll talk to you after this explain. Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak in favor of the resolution? Okay. I'll roll up at once. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Is there anyone who would like to speak against the resolution? I'd like to have maybe 10 seconds to just tell you who I am. Please do. My name is Sherry Graves. I was your SD representative um, on the platform committee, both in 14 and 16. I was not elected, so I don't think I was. I was appointed by the two SREC people that we have and asked to serve in that capacity. I'm a Christian. I am a Republican. I am a wife. I am a mother. I am a grandmother. I am a retired conservative conservative, conservative college professor of accounting. I am a registered CPA, licensed CPA in Texas. I have served on boards um, at the state level. I was on the Texas Board of Public Accountancy on the Qualifications Committee. And I'm just telling you this, not for me, but I just want you to know where I'm coming from. Because I've had to make hard decisions in the past. And now I will start talking about the Platform Committee. Thank you for that. indulging me. <laughs> but when I got to that platform committee, I was amazed. I thought I was pretty informed, even though I had very little time to prepare because the first time I was asked, I filled in for somebody who had to have an emergency operation right before the convention. But the thing that I was just amazed at was I had my beliefs and I had reasons for reasons of how I had to vote or wanted to vote. But when I heard the opposition side, you know, they had valid reasons, too. And so when I got down to the end, I had to make a decision. I had to raise my hand on one vote or the other. And the only way I could do that was to search my heart and my convictions and vote my conscience. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes it was difficult. We had mothers crying because they wanted us to legalize marijuana for their kids. I mean, it was some of these things were gut-wrenching. I'm just going to tell you. And it, it was difficult. And what it told me was, I don't know that I could be a senator or a representative and go through that every day. Because that's what they face every day. And so when it comes down, I, I was looking again, and like I said, I, was, I voted on all these. But if you look at the principles that are down here, these 10 principles, and I ask every one of you to prioritize them, how many different answers do you think we would get? One? Many. So what happens when you have to make that decision is sometimes you have to prioritize one principle over another. Not that one is bad and one is good. And let me give you an example, and again, this comes from my personal life. I have a granddaughter. She's 20 years old. She's fixing to graduate from nursing school in December, a 20-year-old, okay? Remember what you were like at 20? She's gonna be a registered nurse before she is 21. And when I looked at this, she has already been recommended for the graduate program at UTMB. But when I, two, two men, oh, oh, okay. Well, I would have to actually went over for her life. Um, I know that two minutes doesn't seem like much, but it's, it's almost a thirty, and it's well beyond where we normally sure, do you with so much work to do. Even. Um, so, is there anyone to speak in favor? Is there anyone to speak in favor of the resolution? There being none, Madam no. Chairman, would you recognize me? Murray? I move that we table the motion to censure until we as a committee have had time to read the material which the Honorable Representative Clark has presented to us. And uh, it, that's my motion. I move to table until our next meeting. Okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Madam Chair, with all, I, I want to say this. These people came and they came to be heard. And I think it's only fair they're here. It's part of the deliberate, finish the deliberations, finish the meeting. They were given then, the opportunity. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You said one to speak, is one more, one against no, one. We're not going to sit here all night. No, I, for two minutes. You're not gonna, no, I'm sorry. This is this is the, the measure. No, this that is I parliamentary started. procedure. I, I'm sorry. We're done. You, said, you said up to five members could speak. You let one member speak. I mentioned some Parliamentary procedure means not... one for, one against, one for, one against. You can't just sit there and keep going. And I also said I think you should excuse our own sitting state senator from having an opportunity to address. This is the man that if you vote for and sues me on. And that's all I'm saying. You know, I, and I'm, I apologize. I thought all of you would have a chance to speak. As you can tell, I don't run the show. But there's, there's a, a motion to speak. Table. Table. We're getting out of order. I second the motion. 
be seconded by motion to table. The chair at this time would like to know if there is anyone on the committee who would be opposed to allowing Senator Nichols to speak to us for two minutes. Anyone on the committee? Opposed to opposed to allowing our senator in Senate District 3, Robert Nichols from Jacksonville, Texas, to speak to us tonight for two minutes. Anyone opposed? I'm opposed to limiting it to I mean, two minutes. Just. We've done two minutes on everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seriously, though, we went over on, on this. Okay, I, 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 I just, we went over on Travis. I'm just, I seriously doubt anybody's going to jump down his throat and say you have to stop. Okay. Okay. So, there, you know, we just. There being, there being no expression of refusal, uh, Madam Chairman, would you please Senator Nichols, would you please address Thank the Thank you very much, and I'll keep it under two minutes. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of y'all for the work that you do. I've worked on Cherokee County Republican politics since the 70s, back when John Tower ran, and we couldn't even vote the Republican primary. So thank y'all very much for what you do. The, um, Rule 44 is a new rule. As I understand, it went in last convention. Uh, I think it had an intended purpose, and that was if you've got a state senator, a state Repub uh, representative, or county judge, or whatever, that is truly opposed to some of our core Republican principles, you need to nail him, and that's what 44 was about. But when you get into core principles of the party, I'm thinking in terms of I love the nine we've got, or however many numbers they are, and I do support those, and I support the platform. Um, but uh, as she was saying, uh, sometimes you have to prioritize these things. The, when, if, if someone was jumping out supporting state uh, subsidies for abortions, nail them. If they're out trying to pass a state income tax, nail them. But one of these things is a whistle and a dinghy <laughs> and to interpret whether or not you voted for or against a whistle and a dinghy, I mean, come on. That's a safety issue. It's a safety issue. It's not a core principle issue. It's kind of like a horn on the car. Uh, that's a core principle, and that's enough to censor somebody with that's on the list. Uh, I, I would encourage you to vote against this tonight, to get it over with, put it to bed. We need to... Use 44 for real stuff, not crazy interpretations of some of this thing. Uh, I keep going back to the whistle on the dean. Uh, the, what, two of these were amendments that he voted against by Stickman, Representative Stickman. Stickman always puts poison pills in his amendments. If you vote for a Stickman amendment, you're going to blow something up. He doesn't pass anything, he blows things up. If I were voting and it was his name on the amendment, I would vote against it before I'd even have to read it because I know it's that bad. And so, I mean, that's four, three or four of them right there. But I think we're doing this man injustice by, by curing this. This thing's been dragging out for months now. I'm probably over my two minutes. Am I? But uh, y'all really need to put this thing over with. Vote it up, vote it down, something, but get it over with. And anyway, I appreciate my. And I, and I concur with that. I'm the one being accused of this. And we do need to put this behind us. I would appreciate your vote tonight. I would appreciate your vote, your chance to think about it. But let's don't drag this thing off. I don't want this in our campaigns going on forever. Both up on the trend here. Thanks. Okay, it's been moved to table the motion until the next meeting. It has been seconded. Is there any discussion by the body? Since I made the motion, I'd like to speak in favor of it. Take me two minutes. Uh, I too am a professing Christian, as is Travis. Sometimes Christians disagree on politics. I love him as a brother in Christ. I believe that he loves me as a brother in Christ, and I remember that the Bible says one side sounds right until you hear the other side. And that's <laughs> a very paraphrase. And I have found that throughout my life, I had run into situations where things sounded right by the first person who presented them to me. And after I had the opportunity to research, things didn't exactly sound the same when I heard the other side of the story. 
and that's why I have moved to table this until next time. Because if I vote tonight, I will vote to censure. If I have an opportunity to look at what you had presented, and no, I couldn't look at it in the six minutes you were talking and pay attention to you. So I would like to hear your side, look at your side, and uh, come back and vote next time. That's why I voted, or that's why I made the motion. More discussion among the committee. I would like to know how long we have to wait to meet again in order to make this decision. Probably the middle of November, and, and we'll try to be sure that everything is set um, so that we can, can we notice. can be done. Yeah, you have to have ten days' notice. But I don't want you to be coming and having meetings in the Christmas season. So I want to get us done with the business oh, that's before yeah. Thanksgiving. So um, that it'll probably be sometime. I, I've got to give you ample notice, and I have things to do as well. So we're going to work it out and, and give you your notice. Okay. Is there anyone speaking against? Anybody have anything to say against? The motion to table. Okay. So we have a motion to table. Um, the resolution until the next meeting. John, did you want to speak? I, I think we should have the public input as well. Um, I think maybe people were confused about the uh, public input because I thought maybe I think I thought that people were still going to be allowed to speak. I did not quite understand that it was. Good luck doing that in commissioner's court. I, um, it doesn't work like that, and I'm, I'm very, very sorry, but this is a deliberative body. We have rules, and we're going to obey the rules. I, I don't mind having giving you the options, but they're parliamentary procedure. Those are the rules that govern this body. Like it or not, the body voted on them. That's what we do. And so we pretty much are wrapping this up. The question on, uh, on the floor right now is, to table the resolution until the next meeting to allow consideration by the body. All in favor of that motion. All opposed. Okay, the motion carries. We're going to table the resolution until the next meeting. It will be most likely roughly mid-November. Will it be the same way the public can comment and all of that? The public, these are always open to the yeah, public. They always have it. Will you adjourn them? Will you adjourn them? No, we've got to now. I'm happy now. I'm sorry, Cindy. What? I was just asking a question. If you want to public comment next time, mm -hmm. let her know. Let me know beforehand it goes on the agenda. You always have that option. I always tell you when I send the meeting announcement, if there is an item you want, let me know. Let I'm me know. curious if it's going to be handled in the similar way that we get tonight. It will be handled however the body chooses. Okay. okay. And you will approve your agenda before you do it. Okay. Josie, you have an announcement? I would like this for the committee to, uh, I, make, I would like to make a motion for the committee to send Empire Texas.